The candy desk has been a tradition of the United States Senate since 1965, whereby a senator who sits at a particular desk near a busy entrance keeps a drawer full of candy from members of the body. The current occupant of the candy desk is Indiana Senator to Dodd Young. In 1965, California's George Murphy joined the Senate and kept candy in his desk for himself and his colleagues, despite eating being prohibited on the Senate floor. When he left the Senate after a six-year term, other Republican senators maintained the custom. The tradition did not become publicly known until the mid-1980s when Washington Senator Slade Gorton revealed it in announcing that he would be sitting at the candy desk. Aside from Murphy, a total of 18 senators have maintained the candy desk tradition, including John McCain, Harrison Smith, and Rick Santorum, who stocked it with confectionery from his home state of Pennsylvania, including from the Hershey Chocolate Company. After Santorum left the Senate in 2007, the candy desk was maintained by a number of senators for a short time each, before Pennsylvania Senator Toomey kept the desk from 2015 to 2020, 2020. George Murphy was elected as the senator from California in 1964 to take office the following year. Murphy, known as a song and dance man for musicals such as Broadway Melody of 1938, Broadway Melody of 1940, and For Me and My Girl, had a taste for sweets. A short time after joining the Senate, he began keeping candy in his desk. In 1968, he moved desks and ended up at the spot where the candy desk is now situated. Since more senators now passed his desk on a daily basis, he started offering the contents of his desk or heat stuff. Senators who were invited to partake in the suite started calling Murphy's desk the candy desk. Murphy was defeated in the 1970 Senate elections, but subsequent senators have carried on the tradition of supplying candy in their desk for the enjoyment of the Senate as a whole. Paul Fannin, Harrison Schmidt, Roger Jepson, and Steve Sims all respectively continued the new candy desk tradition. After Murphy's term was over, Fannin, Schmidt, and Jepson supplied only hard candy, but Sims was the first to stock sweets supplied by Candy and Chocolate Association. During the tenures of these senators, the candy desk was not fixed to one particular spot. Senate seating charge so Schmidt, during his time at the candy desk, sat one seat to the right of its traditional spot for the 95th Congress, and then across the aisle from the traditional spot for the 96th. The existence of the tradition was not publicly known until 1985, when Slade Gordon put out a press release stating he was now the occupant of this desk and would carry on the rich tradition started by Murphy. He also named the past senators who had continued the tradition in 1997. The candy desk was referenced by Kip Bond during a debate over the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 1998. He compared the sizes of microchips to candy he had taken from the desk. Rick Santorum sat at the candy desk from 1997 to 2007. Being a senator from Pennsylvania, he filled the candy desk with Hershey candy and just born products such as Mike and Ike and Hot Tame. During this period, Hershey shipped roughly 100 pounds of chocolate and other candy four times a year for Santorum to fill the desk with. When Santorum failed to get re-elected in the 2006 U.S. Senate elections, Hershey stopped supplying the desk. We were pleased to be a small part of sweetening up congressional proceedings, said Kirk Sabo, a spokesman for Hershey. After Santorum's electoral defeat, Senator Craig Thomas began sitting at the desk. Wyoming, the state he was representing, has no members of the National Confectioners Association, and therefore no candy makers large enough to donate hundreds of dollars of candy to fill the desk. Senate ethics rules forbid members accepting gifts, rules forbid members accepting gifts worth $100 or more a year from a single source, which can become a problem if a large amount of candy is consumed from the desk each year. An exception to this rule allows larger gifts of objects created or produced in the state the senator is from, as long as the items are primarily not used by the senator and his staff. This is so senators can offer visitors home grown snacks such as Florida orange juice or Georgia peanuts. When I asked about Thomas being in charge of the candy desk, Susan Smith, the representative from the National Confectioners Association, stated, we're happy to provide candy if there are. Association members. 
it would be difficult for us to do now. These issues were worked around by asking many small local Wyoming confectionery businesses and chocolatiers to give small amounts of candy that were rotated in and out of the desk after Thomas's death in 2007. It was looked after by George Bonovich and then Mel Martins, both had relatively short tenures. In 2009, George Lemieux, Martinez's successor, began sitting at the desk and was there until he left the Senate in 2011. Mark Kirk of Illinois occupied the desk from 2011 to 2015. The desk received renewed attention in 2020 during the first impeachment trial of Donald Trump when a candy bar originating from the desk was spotted being eaten by Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy during proceedings. The candy desk is not a specific desk in the Senate chamber, but rather a specific seating within the chamber, and any desk that the senator seated in that position chooses to use becomes the candy desk. The desk's location has remained static since at least the 97th Congress, 1981-1983. It is next to the eastern door to the Senate chamber, most senators enter the chamber through this door, which is adjacent to elevators leading to one of the stops on the United States Capitol subway system. The desk is the first desk on the right or Republican side and is in the last row of desks. Traditionally, the candy desk is always on the Republican side of the Senate chamber and is used by a Republican senator. Since 2023, the desk has been occupied by Indiana Senator Todd Young. The Democrats have also had a candy desk since at least 1985, a roll-top desk located on the front wall, belonging to the United States Senate Democratic Conference Secretary, and is also filled with sweet. This tradition began sometime later than the better-known candy desk. Hershey Kisses were the most popular candy from this desk during the 1980s, followed by small caramels. Candy for this desk is paid for through a candy pot to which senators who would like to partake of the desk's contents contribute. Until he left the Senate in 2015, Jay Rockefeller was responsible for collecting the money and purchasing the candy. This tradition is less widely known. A 2009 article claimed that even the historian of the United States Senate does not know much about it. Other senators sometimes keep candy in their desks as well. Catherine Buck, a United States Senate page at the time wrote in 2005, One senator with a particularly strong hankering for chocolate is Jim Tallon from Missouri. Once during a vote, he called people away from the candy desk to his own on the other side of the row. There were O's and A's until six people walked away with Russell Stover low-carb chocolate. I guess the Atkins craze had made its way to the Senate. 